Hallelujah. If you're ready for the word, say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Open your Bibles with me in John chapter 15. I have something from the Lord that's going to bless you today. I'm going to talk about pruning the four D's of the devil. I've got the title of this message this morning. That's my title. Or a title that I stole from someone. But it's someone that it's half of me, so it's all good. It's not really stealing when you take it from your wife. <laughs> so, it was my wife's title. And I took it from her. Pruning the four deeds of the devil. Let's go there to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. And I want you to keep your Bibles open because we're going to go through a few different verses today. John chapter 15, verse 1. I'm going to start reading from, from the NIV version. From the NIV version. And it says this. I am the true vine. And my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit, I'm sorry, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the world, the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Say this with me. I cannot do anything without Jesus. Say it with me. I cannot do anything without Jesus. Remain in me and as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branch. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. This is so powerful. And I like to always pause in here because a lot of people don't, 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 don't understand that we have this, this authority, that we have this freedom, that we have this gateway. Watch this, verse 7. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask me whatever you wish. Ask me whatever you desire. And watch this now. And it will be done for you. When you stay connected with Jesus, when you remain connected to the main branch, to the main tree, and his teachings, his words are in you, now you have this gateway where you can ask for whatever you want. Pastor, what does it mean? Wish, your, your wish and your desire, or whatever you want according to some other translations. It means just like that. It means just like that. But it's obviously, when you're so full of the word and the teachings of Jesus, you know how to pray. Right. You're not going to pray foolish prayers. You're not going to pray dumb prayers. You're not going to ask for somebody else's wife. Come on, somebody. Say amen. amen. Or somebody else's husband. Right. Because you know it's not the will of God. But when you pray the will of God, you have this, this guarantee that you will have exactly what you said. You, I will give you what you wish. I will give you what you desire. Amen. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciple. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments or my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. Verse 11. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. Amen? Amen. So I read this whole story here because I want you to understand what Jesus is talking about pruning some branches. And there are 
are a lot of people in the world today that think that when God means about pruning, he's going to cut some things out of your life. That he's going to cut some things that, that brings you joy, that brings you happiness, that brings you peace and satisfaction. People always think that we got to be careful because everything that is good won't last forever. That is a say of the word, the world that has nothing to do with the word of God. There's nothing in the word of God that says, be careful, enjoy it right now because it's going to last just a little bit. Right. Amen. The Bible tells us that the blessing and the goodness and the mercy of God goes up to a thousand generations. Can you think about that? If a generation, if a generation is considered 40 years, so now just do the math. That means we're talking about what? 40 times a thousand. That's 40,000 years of goodness. Of goodness. So where we come up with these ideas or people come up with these ideas that what God is doing it will only last a little bit. Right. Will only last a little bit. If the Bible tells us that his goodness, his kindness will follow you up to a thousand generations. So people have this understanding, this misunderstanding that everything that God does is temporary. And all of a sudden you're going to have to get into that pruning season. He's going to cut. Maybe you're going to lose that good job. Maybe you're going to lose a loved one. Maybe your ministry that is flourishing is going to stop flourishing. Now, people, everybody loved you. All of a sudden, it's an ugly season. Now, people are going to start abandoning you, rejecting you. Your friends won't answer the phone calls anymore. Your friends will not invite you to dinner anymore like they used to. People think that that's the season of pruning. And that's not Bible, and that is not what Jesus was talking about. Right. Even in the natural, pruning does not mean something bad. Right. Are you with me? Right. Even in the natural, pruning does not mean that something bad is happening. That God is cutting something off, or the gardener or the farmer is cutting something good off of you. I put this out of Wikipedia for your own understanding, and you can do the same research for yourself. And this is what Wikipedia talks about pruning. This is what it means. Pruning. Pruning is a horticultural, arboricultural, and self-cultural practice involving the selective removal of certain parts of a plant, such as branches, buds, or roots. Watch this far now. The practice entails the targeted removal, watch this now, of disease, damage, dead, deranged, non-productive, structurally unsound, or otherwise unwanted plant material from crop and landscape plants. <coughs> Some try to remember these categories as the four D's. That's what pruning means. Pruning means the practice that it tells of targeted removal. So you see, it's not just cutting anything. It's cutting things that are targeted. That was targeted. Watch this now. And things that are, watch this. The practicing tells targeted removal of disease. That's number one. That's D number one. Damaged. Dead. And the range or non productive, no non productive plants. Diseased, sick, damaged, dead, the range. That's the four D's of pruning in the natural. That's what they call the four D's. So I want you to get this because I'm going to show you how this has nothing to do with God. Like I said before, when I was teaching about the offering, your God is not a God who gives and takes it away. Right. He's not a God that a God that blesses you for a season. Amen. He's not a God that blesses you temporarily. Amen. He's a God that blesses you and 
keep on blessing. Amen. He's a God that blesses you just like he blessed Abraham. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your household. I'm going to bless your children. And through you and your children, all the families on the earth that are under this umbrella, under the blood of Jesus, will receive the same blessing. And in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29 says, if you belong to Jesus Christ, then you do, then are heir of Abraham and you are heir, you are two children of Abraham and heir of the promise. So all the promises of God is now for you and your generation and your descendants and the descendants coming behind you and your grandchildren and your great grandchildren. Come on somebody. Even your dog and your, your dog, your bird, everything in your household is blessed. Because according to the Bible even your animals are blessed. Yeah. That's what we did in our house when we first bought Bella. We bought Bella our little poodle. And she, if you think she's small now, she was extra small then. She could fit in my hand literally. And four days in the house, she, she developed this major disease, lung disease. She had pneumonia. And you could hear her little lungs breathing out loud. I put her up and she went like this. Her little paws, her little legs were like this, and she just lay flat. I said, oh, something is wrong. Called my wife, we rushed her to the hospital. We bought her, she came with pneumonia, we didn't, we didn't know, we didn't know, and then four days later, got worse. And the doctor said, she's gonna have to stay here. And we let her stay there. They gave her IV, they shaved her little leg, put an IV in there, and she stayed there for four days. We brought her back home, she was not better. And we're putting her on steam showers so she can breathe that steam and giving her medicine and nothing is working. And she's getting worse and worse. We bring her back to the doctors and my wife suggested the doctor to change the medicine. And she said, well, we usually don't do that, but we're going to do because you're asking. And my wife asked her to change the medicine. She changed the medicine, but she said to me, I think you should take her to another hospital that is stronger and better and bigger and have more resources than we do. And because she's going to die. Dogs, this little, die very quickly. And I, my wife and I were already mad. Because even though she was with us only for a few days, we, we just developed a love for her. We said, this dog came to stay. This dog is going to be a blessing. How, how many weeks? A few weeks already. So the, the, we, we were in love with her already. And we said, no. No, we didn't, we didn't spend this much money on this dog to come to the house and be with us for a few weeks and, and, and die. No, 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 no. When they told me, you got to bring her to another hospital, I was already mad. And I said, I'm not going to take her. And the lady said, why not? I said, because I'm done. She's suffering a lot. It's not helping. I'm going to stay. I'm going to keep her home. She's going to die. I said, she's not going to die. I said to the woman. She's not going to die. Because I remember that the Bible says that even your animals are blessed. I said, Lord, you gave me this little puppy because my son wanted it. And now that it's in my house, it's blessed like I am blessed. And no sickness and disease is going to attack my little dog. And we're going to pray over her. We're going to speak over her. And she's going to be a miracle dog. And she will never die of sickness and disease. Yeah, amen. And we spoke over her. And now she's 11 years old, strong and healthy. She was months old. Now she's 11 years old, strong and healthy, and just as beautiful. A few gray hairs, but still beautiful. And it's still beautiful. And, 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 you know, and barking at every stranger that comes near the door. So what I'm saying to you is that when God blesses you and you have this understanding that the blessing of God is over everything regarding you, over everything regarding your family, does not matter what the devil tries to attack. You have the power and the authority to rebuke the devil and paralyze the devil in his tracks and say, you're not going to touch my house, my finances, my kids, my job, my career, my truck, my car, anything, my animals, everything in my house is blessed because I serve a good God that keeps on blessing. I don't have ups and downs in my life. I have ups and ups. It's not scriptural to have ups and downs in your life. Well, that's what the world and religion talks about. One day, you know, things are good. You never know. You know, that ugly Monday can always knock on your door. You speak for yourself. Not in my house. I'm not expecting ugly days. I'm not expecting prophesied difficulty. Even though I can have adversity because Jesus said that I will have adversity, but I'm going to have joy. Yes. Be a good cheer because I have conquered the world. So because Jesus conquered the world, I'm going to have joy and be a good cheer because I will overcome every ugly season, every adversity that comes my way. I don't live in the book. I just tell the story. I just tell what the facts are showing me that they have no right to remain, that they're going to have to turn around and go back to sender because I live the goodness of God in my life. Say amen with me. Amen. 
like most Christians do. A few weeks ago, we went to visit a church. Pay attention to this. Pay attention to this. Because it's going to, now I'm going to get into where I wanted to go with you in my message. Pay very close attention to, the, to this. A few weeks ago, we went to visit a church. We're here in town waiting for the building. And we start visiting a few churches. Let's see what's going on here. Let's go receive. We're Christians. I'm a pastor. But when I'm not pastoring, I go to another church to receive. I go to another church to receive. I'm not the kind of pastor that I put up a show when it's my time to preach. No. I believe that if you're not receiving from anybody, you don't have anything to give. So while we were waiting for the building, we had some Sunday mornings that were free because we had our meetings on Thursday nights. So we went to visit a few churches and we went to this one particular church. And the pastor was there. The pastor of the church was preaching. And he, this is what he was saying. He read on this verse, and this is what he said. I, and this is what he said. He said that every 10 years, his life goes through a pruning season. Every 10 years, I already seen it. It happened all every year, every 10 years. Every 10 years, and this is what he said. In 2003, we lost members in our church. We lost money and we lost loved ones. We lost people who left from this church to other churches. We lost people who died. A lot of people died. It was a difficult year. And the Lord told me that was your year of pruning. Amen. Then things got better. And then we got better. But then when it came to 2013, I had cancer. I had cancer. My father had cancer. And people in the church started dying again. And people left. Money crisis. And I'm just listening to him. And I look at my wife. I said, 2023, we better run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. That I, and then he said this, 2023, well, church, I know this year is going to be hard for us. January, the beginning. This is the, let me tell you something. I don't understand these people that get into January. Instead of prophesying a good year, they prophesy a horrible year. Come on. Speak for yourself, not in this head, not in my house. No, no, not here. Not here. I'm not expecting ugly. I'm expecting great things. Amen. Amen. And this is what he says. I know, church, this year, 2023, get ready because it's going to be a hard year for us. A hard year for us. I know some people will leave the church. I'm going to retire. People are going to leave. And I wanted to tell them, you better start now. I wanted to tell them. I wanted to give out flyers. People are going to leave the church. And some of you will die. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Marshall and the Cynthia, my team, we were there and everybody was like, he's telling his people, get ready, you will die this year. He's prophesying death over his own people. I said, if I was me, I would run. They said, I'm not staying here. <laughs> what kind of pastor are you standing here? Ready? Some of you will die. I said, no, you speak for yourself. You prophesy over yourself, not my house. No, 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 no. The Bible says, in my house, according to Psalm 91, with long life, the Lord will satisfy me. <laughs> Jesus said, you're going to have whatever you say. Keep saying that. That's exactly what you're going to read. That's exactly what you're going to get. I know this year is going to be hard for us. People will leave. Some of you will die. And I was shocked. I said, what kind of pastor prophesies this in the church? And what kind of people sit and listen to this and say amen? I mean, obviously nobody was saying amen. Because it was dead. dead. Like if, if, a, if a pin dropped on the on floor, you, you, you were here. You hear, I'm serious. And that's what people said. And then he said that that is the pruning of God. That's not the pruning of God. There was some stupid devil that attacked you in 2003. And you thought it was God. Right. And then in 2013, because of your big mouth, you went through a hard season again. And you think that it's God. Where is it in the Bible that God says that you're going to have 10 years of blessing and 10 years of curse? Right. Where in the Bible says you're going to have 10 years of good days and, ten, and one year of, of, of losing everything that you earned before? Where is in the Bible that? People come up with this idea. And that's what the Bible says in Mark chapter 7. If 
I'm not mistaken, that said, your traditions have made the word of God of no power. The word of God doesn't work in your life because of your religious mentality, because yeah. of your religious teaching, because of your ugly thinking. Why are you giving God credit for something that the devil is doing in your life? Once you see the Bible, then the devil is the one that came to steal, kill, and destroy, and take a stand of faith and authority over your house and your church and said, we had a bad day in 2003, but we're not going to have a bad one in 2013. We had a difficult day in 2013, but we're not going to have it in 2023. We're going to break the cycle of curse. We're going to break. Why do we think that we have to keep going through the same course, through the same disappointment, through the same frustration, fighting the same devils, dealing with the same sickness and disease? You have to dig your ground. You have to stay and take your heels and said, no, enough is enough. No, devil, not in my house, not in this church, not in my family, enough is enough. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I was right. Mark chapter 7, verse 13, from the Amplified Version says this. You nullify the authority of the word of God, acting as if it did not apply. Because of your tradition, which you have handed down through elders and do many things such as that. You nullify, you cancel the authority of the word of God as if it did not apply. I said this on Wednesday here, on Thursday, as we we're teaching. And I said it. We have people today in church that live as if the word of God doesn't work. They live as if Jesus never died. Because of their tradition, because of their religion mindset, because they're in a comfort zone, they rather just accept and blame God for the things that they cannot explain instead of fighting, instead of taking the stand of faith, instead of saying to the devil, no devil, you're the one who's trying to block me from getting to my promised land. You're the one who's trying to block me from receiving my miracle. You're the one who's trying to stop my family from being healed and whole. You're the one who's trying to talk to destroy my blessing. And I'm going to put a, a, a line here today from this day on, you're not allowed to cross this line. My house, my family, my children is off limit to you. Don't you come near me, devil. Don't you come near me. The Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I am the church of Jesus Christ. Now I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. God himself abides inside of me. And devil, I'm moving forward. I'm not running backwards. I'm not hiding under the bed. You're going to have to make a decision and you're going to have to leave me because I have made a decision today that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, somebody. Never before. That's what's going to happen in 
this house. That's what's going to happen in this ministry. That's why more churches in, in Jacksonville to bring the power of God, not another church, not another religion. We don't need another church. We need a church that carries the glory of God. We don't need a church that believes in miracles. We need a church that carries miracles. Come on, somebody. Talk to me. We need a church that carries miracles. We don't need church that talk faith. We need church that live by faith. We need church that don't just have a faith a, a quotes to make people feel and think that they are spiritual. We need people that understand what they're saying and they're living by what they're saying and they're receiving exactly what they're saying. To get back your land, what belongs. 
on to you, you can have it right now because this is the year of the Lord. The year of the Lord meant the Jubilee. And Jubilee said what you had to wait for 50 years, you can receive every day. What you have to wait 50 years, you can have it now. Jesus broke every barrier. Jesus broke everything, every time barrier that you had to wait to receive a miracle. You don't have to wait to receive a miracle anymore. You don't have to wait until December to have the best year of your life. You can have it today. You can have it right now because Jesus came to accelerate the time. It's about me and you saying like just like the, 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 the blind Bartimaeus. I am sick and tired of waiting. So now I'm going to say, is Jesus in town? So Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up. No. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up. You're bothering the master. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He spoke even louder and he called Jesus' attention. Jesus turned around and gave him his miracle. The woman with the issue of blood, she said, I'm sick and tired of waiting. Twelve years and no better. Your life is the truth of the word of God. Amen. 
Amen. The Bible says in Romans, let every man be a liar and God be true. Amen. That's right. The word of God is final authority in your life. Amen. The word of God is final authority in my life. I don't live according to the world. I don't live according to Fox or CNN. I don't live according to anything outside of God's word. My decisions and my life is dictated by God's word and God's word alone. Amen. Amen. That's right. Say amen with me. Amen. Say that is me as well. <laughs> that is me as well. Jesus came not to make your life miserable, but to give you abundant joy. To give you abundant joy and to remove and what can stop you from enjoying the life he purchased for you with his own blood. So watch this. Let me give you the four D's of the devil that, that Jesus came to remove. Are you ready for this? Yes. Number one, death. That's the number one D that Jesus came to remove and to prune out of your life. That the devil meant to put it in your life and creep up over you. Death, because he's not the giver of death, he's the life giver. Amen. He came to give you life. According to John 10, 10, from the Bible <coughs> version says this, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have, that you may have life and have it to the full. Yes. Have it to the full. Not, I want to prophesy and say this with, to you today. I want you to get this in your heart. Not you or anyone in your life will have premature death. Amen. Not you or anyone in your life is going to die before it's their time. Amen. Come on, somebody. Say it with me. Because Amen. Jesus came to give us life. Long life. With long life, I'll satisfy you. Amen. The devil is the one that try to kill your dreams. Try to kill your babies. Try to kill your children. Try to, to kill your, your vision, your promises. But today, God is going to turn it around because that is a deed of the devil. That is a death that devil tried to put in your life and God is going to prune it out of your life today in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The second, the second deed that Jesus came to destroy, the, 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 the power of death. That is an enemy over God's people. Yeah. Death. Especially in America. People live on debt so much. So much. It's everything is credit cards. Everything is financing. And everything is loans. Loans and after loans. And you get another loan to pay another loan. Right. And you get another one to pay another loan. And it's, an, again, a, a snowball effect that never ends. Right. And the devil wants to keep us there. The devil wants you to do that because when you don't own anything and you, all you make is to pay bills, right. is to pay bills, you don't enjoy life. Right. And that is a B. That is a, a, a something that the devil has tried to put on people. And God wants you to live debt free. The Bible right. says, oh, no man, anything but love. Yeah, and I'm with her in prophesying. And these people here in this church, the people here will live that free. Amen. People here will live that free. Amen. If you get this word and you get to understand that when you put God first and everything in your finances and God is the center of your life and you live by faith, not by sight, let me tell you something. You can live a debt free life. Amen. You can live a debt free Amen. life. Amen. You can live a debt free life. Amen. Say this with me I will be debt free in I Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, that He. He came, he came to bring you debt, but Jesus came to make you rich. Yes. Amen. Make you wealthy. Look what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 15. Watch this. This is powerful. If you believe in God to be debt free, hold on to this verse right now. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 1 says this. I'm reading from the message translation. At the end of every seventh year, cancel all debt. Man, this is good. This is the procedure. Everyone who has lent money... To a neighbor, write it off. You must not press your neighbor or his brother for payment. All that are canceled. God says so. Amen. All that are canceled. Oh, but pastor, that was in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant. If, the, if that was happening in the Old Covenant, how much more is going to happen in the New Covenant that says that we're in a better, prom in a better covenant with better promises? Right. Amen. If that was good in the old covenant, that should be even better in the new covenant. Amen. Yeah, that's right. 
And I am receiving to be completely debt free. This ministry will always be completely debt free in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. God can not only cancel your debts, but he can make you rich. If you believe in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 22, that the blessing of the Lord makes a person rich. And that the rich means rich. And he adds no sorrow with it. That's right. Amen. No sorrow, no toil, no disappointment, no frustration. The blessing makes a man rich. As Abraham, God said to him in Genesis chapter 12, I will bless you. Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 and 2 says that he was a rich man with silver, with gold, and cattle. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's a result of the blessing. Yeah. That's a result of the blessing. Now let me give you the third D, depression. That's, the, that's, that, that's another D that Jesus is going to prune out of your life today. Because he is your joy. I declare over you today, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. The joy of the Lord, say this with me out loud. The joy of the Lord, the Lord is, my is my strength. Hallelujah. The spirit of depression, fear, anxiety, and even suicidal thoughts are pruned, are pruned off of you in Jesus' name now. Even depression, even suicidal thoughts, anxiety, fear of any kind is being broken off of you in the name of Jesus. Over every person under the sound of my voice, people that are watching online, I speak that over you right now in the name of Jesus. The spirit of depression, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of fear, the spirit of suicidal thoughts, in the name of Jesus, be destroyed right now in Jesus' name. And the last one, disease. Sickness and disease. The, first, the Bible says in 1 Peter 2, 2, 24 from the Amplified Classic. He personally bore our sins in his own body. He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree. As on an altar and offered himself on it. That we might die. Cease to exist to sin. And live to righteousness. Watch now. By his wounds, you have been healed. That's another branch that Jesus is going to prune out of your life. No sickness and disease, disease is going to dwell in your body. No sickness and disease is going to have the right. Doesn't matter. I don't care what the doctors have said. I don't care what's the name of the of the of the of the sickness and disease or the, the, the prognosis or the diagnosis. It's going to be destroyed in the name of Jesus. It has no right in the name of Jesus. The Passion Translation says this: Our instant healing, healing flowed from His wounding. Our instant healing flowed from His wounding. This foul spirit of sickness that has isolated many Christians, many believers today, it's being destroyed and broken off of you. Amen. That's another branch that Jesus is going to prune out of your life in the name of Jesus. Yes. He personally took on his body for you. He personally took so you can be healed. The symptoms, watch this now. The sickness doesn't determine the fact that you and I are already healed. Amen. 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 I feel something. Okay. That is a fact. That's not the truth. That's right. The truth says you have been healed. <coughs> if the Bible says I am, then I am. It doesn't say I will be. It says I am. I have. It's already done. The right for healing was taken on the cross. Was released on the cross. It's yours. It's mine. It's a right that you and I have. All we have to do is believe and take it by faith. Amen. All we have to do is receive it and say that I am, I speak against every sickness. I speak against every disease. Yes. I never forget, and I'm going to wrap it up with this story right now. In 2019, 2019, I went to the doctor, early 2020 actually. I went to the doctor for a regular checkup. And... When I got there, I was riding my motorcycle. When I got there, actually on my way there, I start feeling my vision very blurry. And as I'm riding the motorcycle, 
a major headache coming. And I'm thinking maybe because it's too sunny, too bright, and I had a, I, I looked at the sun and now my vision is blurry and I have this headache, but it's gonna go away. So I'm riding the motorcycle, going to the doctor for a regular checkup. And I'm just by myself riding my motorcycle. And the headache is just getting more intense and more intense and more intense and more intense. I get there, I park the motorcycle, and I go across the street to 7-Eleven to get uh, some Advil. And I take some Advil, and I, as I'm paying, I feel like some, some uh, uh, numbness. numbness. But also that feeling that uh, it's almost like a tingling. A tingling that was coming out all over from the tip of my fingers up to my face. And it's at this whole side is getting numb. It's getting numb and I'm feeling that numbness, but I'm like, what's going on? That's a weird feeling. That's a weird feeling. So I take the medicine and I walk back to the doctor's office. I'm not even up there yet. I'm still in the parking lot. But I can feel that my body's different. And I decided to FaceTime my wife. I said, honey, I, something is off. I'm feeling this. And I called my wife and I called my wife and FaceTime. My face was already crooked. My face was crooked. Our whole side was numb and tingling all over my left side. Immediately we knew that all the symptoms I was feeling was, was, was uh, a stroke feeling. And I was 36 years old. You know, and even if I was 70, it doesn't have any right in my Man. body. Right. I'm not somebody. Man. Those people think that because you're old, you're supposed to die, to die, to die old, to die right. sick. No, you're not supposed to die sick. The Bible says that a Abraham, he went, he, went, he went home to the Lord strong, not sick. Moses went home to the Lord strong, not sick. Caleb and Joshua, especially yeah. Caleb, he said when he was 85, give me this mountain. I feel strong today, 85, as I was when I was 40. Yeah. We don't have to get old and get sick. But anyway, I, was, I started saying, what is this? And then I called my wife and I felt we saw I had all the symptoms for a stroke. All the symptoms. And my wife said, hang up the phone right now. Go upstairs. I'm calling Dr. Eva. And immediately she looked at me and started rebuking. said, devil, take your hands off my husband right now. You have no right to touch my husband in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Immediately when we hung up the phone, she said, go upstairs. I'm calling the, the, the office right now. Because it's the same group that she worked for. And then as I'm walking to the third floor, I decided not to take the elevator. I decided to go up the stairs because I said, I'm healthy, I'm strong, I'm not sick, and I'm going to go up there speaking the word of God. And I went speaking in tongues and praying in tongues and said, that we have no right to, to, to put this nonsense in me. My body's a temple of the Holy Ghost, not a temple of sickness and disease. And I start praying in the spirit. And he started declaring in the name of Jesus. And my wife started saying over there, wherever she was, by the time he gets seen by the doctor, all the sickness is going to have to go away. Yeah. By the time he sees the doctor, the symptoms going to have to go away. They, I go in there. I open the door. They're waiting for me. They put me in the room. They check everything. They check my heart. They check my brain. They check everything. And let me tell you something. They find nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And not to be satisfied when she says to me, you need to go to the ER. You need to go there, but I feel fine. No, you need to go to the ER. They call it symptom. Take your husband to the ER right now. He needs to be checked more because the symptoms were severe. He needs it. And then she took me to the ER. When I got to the hospital, she had already called the hospital. The doctors were waiting for me at the door. They rushed me in again, exam after exam, from 10 a.m. all the way until 11 p.m. that day. I went through all kinds of exam you can think of, and they found nothing yeah. on my body. To this day, I'm strong and healthy, and stroke will never come near my dwelling. Stroke will never come near my dwelling. Any type of sickness and disease is not going to come near my dwelling. I also said a story here last week. I got all the symptoms. Everybody around me got 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 feeling cold and the flu. I went to other people and, 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 and be with other people and people are like, oh, I got the flu, man. I got the flu. I went to play soccer and the guys that, that, that play soccer with me they had the flu. Everybody around me sick. And, and, and people start saying to me, be careful because, you know, you may be next. I said, no, I don't get this junk. Right. I don't get this junk. I don't get sick. I don't know that there's no right. I don't receive that in my body. That's not going to come near my dwelling. I'm not going to, oh, don't sit next to the person because that person is sick. I said, I don't care. I don't have a problem. 
people canceled the game. People didn't show up for the soccer game, but I'm still standing. I'm still strong, and I'm not feeling anything. I didn't take anything. One day, I woke up, and early this week, and I felt all the symptoms. I felt the symptoms, because the devil is persistent. He's a loser, persistent loser, but he's persistent. So, I felt everything coming to church. And I, put a, I had already said in my mind, I'm going to stop at CVS. CVS is right next to the church and buy Dayquil. And take Dayquil, buy the end of the day, I'll be fine. As I'm driving, I said, wait a second. If I'm speaking faith, if I'm believing for total healing my body and I get this junk, even though I feel the symptoms, why am I buying Dayquil? Because a healed man don't have to take medicine. Right. Come on, somebody. Talk yeah. to me. A healed person don't take medicine. If you're healed, you don't take medicine. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're crazy if you take medicine for something that you don't have. Yeah. Right. So I said, I'm, I'm not stopping the CVS. I'm going straight to church. I came to church. An hour later, I realized that I didn't have anything. I didn't feel anything. And I don't have anything to this day. Yeah. Because I remember. That it's another branch that Jesus came to cut off my life. Yes. No sickness, no disease, no death, no no death, no premature death, no debt. In the name of Jesus, no depression. All these things are broken off of you and me because of what Jesus did for us at the blood. That is the pruning that Jesus was talking about. My Father is going to cut off everything that stops you from bearing fruit. I'm not going to cut good things out of your life. Amen. Because I want you to have all these bad things removed off of you so your joy may be complete. Amen. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. Are you receiving anything good this morning? Yes. Say this with me. My God is for me and not against me. Yes. Say it out loud. My God is for me and not against me. Yes. And every plan of the devil Say it, every plan of the devil against my life, against my house, is destroyed today. In the name of Jesus. Say this with me. Jesus came to my life to break and to destroy every work of the devil. Every work of the devil. And every work of the devil is losing its power today. In the name of Jesus. I am blessed. I am anointed. I am highly favored. I have the joy of the Lord. And the peace of God dwells in me. In the name of Jesus. Now give the Lord a big hand of praise. Stand with me everybody in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Before we close today, how many of you got this today? I want you to Amen. receive it today. When everybody says, you know, well, you never know. No, I know. I have the Bible. Oh, you never know. No, I know. I know. It's right here. How do you know it's going to be all right? Because he said so. It's right here. Just read it. Oh, but you know, in the world, oh, that's the world. I'm not of this world. I was sent here. I'm passing by. My resources come from heaven. Well, you never know. I know. Well, things are getting difficult. Speak for yourself. There were people that in the pandemic lost everything because that's what they expected. There are other people through the pandemic that made more money than ever, that prospered more than ever. Because they said, I'm not participating in this junk. Oh, but be careful with the economy and the inflation. Okay. I'm not participating. Just not. The Bible tells me, and we, and we saw in the beginning. There's famine coming. Don't worry, my God will protect me. I have seed in the ground. I have seed on the ground. I have seed on the ground that protects me. I have lived long enough 
God in the natural realm to be harassed by the devil and lose a defeated life to now have all this revelation today and not see my life change. Favorite of favor, miracles to miracles, open doors to 